So welcome to our core coffee chat today, where we get to explore and learn about the Promising Practices database on DataShare Santa Cruz County. We're really excited to be able to share this feature with you and, and do some practice with you and hope that you uh, feel it's useful also in your work. And so we're going to get started um, with a little round of introductions. Uh, so first of all, I'm Nicole Young and I'm one of the consultants for Core Investments. And just so you know, we are offering simultaneous interpretation, but to start off with, Stella is doing consecutive interpretation until we make sure everyone is on the right language channel. And I'm joined today by my regular co-host, Nicole Lezen, and our team members, Nikki Bailey and Gisela Carrasco, who are helping us out, and Stella, of course, our wonderful interpreter. The uh, core investment stands for the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based Investments, and it started off as a results-based collective impact funding model that the county and city of Santa Cruz adopted a few years ago as a way to fund nonprofits to provide safety net services. And in the last few years, it's really evolved into both a funding model and a movement to achieve equitable health and well-being for all people across the lifespan in Santa Cruz County. Next slide. And so that evolution has really been fueled by input and insights from many, many partners in local governments, philanthropy, nonprofits, and community groups through sessions like this. Uh, and this collaborative process has led to the core mission and vision where equity is at the center of all of that. Next slide. And so when we say equitable health and well-being, we mean that all people across the lifespan have equitable opportunities to experience these eight interconnected core conditions for health and well-being, um, and that people's opportunities and the life outcomes aren't predictable for better or for worse by their race, their ethnicity, income level, gender identity, sexual orientation, immigration status, zip code, or other aspects of people's social identities. So as both a funding model and a movement, CORE provides a framework to align priorities and programs, policies and funding and results around community-wide goals and impacts and allows us really to work together to create the CORE conditions for health and well-being. And again, we put equity at the center of this diagram to illustrate that we have to be willing and able to examine and address our individual, organizational, and systemic beliefs and practices and structures that perpetuate the very inequities that we're determined to eliminate. Next slide. So events like the core coffee chats, the core conversations, other trainings that we do, those are all offered under this umbrella of the Core Institute for Innovation and Impact. And the Core Institute is a relatively new way uh, or name for the way that we offer a variety of learning opportunities for people in nonprofits and the public sector, from grassroots groups, and eventually the business community, so that we can build a shared vision and common goals and, and develop skills and capacity together and really increase our ability to work together to make our community a safe, healthy, vibrant place for all. I'm going to turn it over to Nicole Lezen now. Thanks, Nicole. And thanks, everyone, for being here. We wanted to share today the Promising Practices database on DataShare to introduce you to a corner of da the DataShare platform that we're hoping will become a lot more robust over time and more useful to all of you. And if you're not yet familiar with DataShare, stay tuned for some more uh, coffee chats and training events under that core institute umbrella that Nicole Young just described that we hope will share even more of this. And we just are really excited about being able to share this with you today, um, but it's just one of many tools on data share. And although we're gonna focus on the promising practices part of this, just know that there are a lot of great tutorials on data share itself and a lot of other um, ways to use this particular platform. But today we're just going to focus on the Promising Practices database and how it relates to a specific core tool, the Continuum of Results and Evidence. So Nicole is putting a link to data share in the chat for those of you who may want to follow along with um, 
the screens as we're going through them, but I'm also going to show them in this format so you can see them in front of you. So the the core results menu, the continuum of results and evidence and other tools that you're seeing today have come a really long way since Nicole Young and I first started envisioning them as an online interactive menu that links various community impacts to program outcomes for each of the eight core conditions that Nicole just described. And we had always dreamed of doing this in this interactive online uh, format, and we just really wanted this to be a way to have a common language and more alignment across funders, policymakers, service providers, and community members like you. We got so lucky that this work coincided with the development of DataShare as a platform, not only for the core results menu, but so much more that you see here. And we're, we're just um, so grateful to the Health Improvement Partnership and Health Services Agency and others who made this possible and continue to support it. You can find lots of information about the about CORE from the local progress tab that's at the top of every data share page. So some things about CORE are a little buried on here, but you can always find it through the, the um, things that are circled in red here. And another thing that's great about data share is that you can translate everything automatically into Spanish with that translate to tab at the at the upper right corner of your screen. And we'll just show you what that looks like. It translates everything on the page into Spanish. So if you're following along in Spanish and would rather look at web pages in Spanish, that's the way to do it. And then under the resources tab, that's where you'll find the promising practices database that's a feature of DataShare. Um, it's not specific to CORE, but we've been working closely to try to, um, to make it more robust. And we'll talk about that in a lot more detail in just a moment. So stay tuned for that. But here's again, what it looks like in Spanish. And again, you get to that by the upper right corner, clicking on the, uh, the tab that lets you translate everything into Spanish. So there are many ways to follow along, but we'll be sharing screens as well as doing some exercises later where if you want to try to do your own searches, we'll get to practice that together. But before we do that, we wanted to share the core tool that I mentioned. So I'm going to turn it back over to Nicole Young to talk about that. Okay, so as Nicole just mentioned, this is one of the tools we developed a couple years ago now as a way to Let's kind of uh, build some shared knowledge and language about what we mean by that term evidence-based programs and practices. And really we, we've found it helpful to think of it as a continuum of results and evidence. Um, and so uh, Gisela is gonna post another link in the chat um, to this PDF that you can find um, online. It's actually a little bit buried in data share, but this link will take you directly to it if you wanna take a closer look at it. Uh, because I'm not going to go into it in detail today. You'll see screenshots of it or photos of it on this slide here. But really just wanted to point out that when we created this continuum, we defined four points on that continuum, emerging, promising, effective, and proven. And those points, you know, for each of those, we, we developed some working definitions and some descriptions to help uh, kind of articulate the, the distinction or difference between the points on the continuum. Um, which really just speak to, you know, how much data or evidence has been gathered about a particular program or practice or policy, how widely known or how available is that information, um, you know, does it, is it data that has been gathered informally that would be more on the emerging side of the continuum versus something that was uh, gathered through a really rigorous, very structured uh, uh, scientific process like you would see in research studies that are published in, in journal articles. So we really wanted to be able to reflect that full continuum uh, as a way to help us think through, like, what do we mean when we use these different terms? Oftentimes the phrase evidence-based program is used as a catch-all term for everything. And we, we found it helpful to um, define and kind of explain some of the nuances. 
So again, encourage you to take a look at that tool online uh, using that link if you're interested in, it, uh, in learning more about that. If you go to the next slide, Nicole, we're mentioning it here because it's very similar to how the Promising Practices database on DataShare is set up. That's one of the things we really loved about DataShare and felt like it was a natural home for some of the core tools we've been developing. Um, the difference is that instead of four categories uh, on the continuum, the Promising Practices database has three. So actually a little simpler. And so their three categories or points are a good idea. So it's something that's considered promising, but it just hasn't been evaluated yet. So it's very similar to the idea of the emerging or even promising points on the continuum um, on the tool that I just mentioned. The next category in promising practice is effective practice. So that means that there has been an evaluation that's been conducted on that program or that practice or that policy. And that evaluation shows um, that whatever the thing is, it improves outcomes. Uh, you know, and usually defined outcomes, uh, but there hasn't been like a, uh, any kind of a scientific study done that shows that that was a statistically significant result, meaning improved, the results are good, demonstrated improved outcomes. We don't know for sure whether, whether that was by chance or luck or the actual intervention. Um, whereas the third category, evidence-based practice, means that there was uh, a rigorous, more scientific evaluation done where you can say with confidence that the improved outcomes are because of that program or practice or policy, not just by chance. So those are the three categories in data share, again, very similar to our core continuum. Um, and you know, we, want, we feel it's important to emphasize that the, whether you call it categories or tiers or levels or <laughs> whatever phrase you use, um, that we're really trying to, to convey that these don't necessarily, they're not meant to come with like value judgments, meaning that um, an evidence-based practice is inherently better than a good idea. Uh, it's really just a way for us to think about what do we know about this program or practice or policy? How much data exists about it um, that might tell us whether this would be a good fit for our community or a particular a group of people or issue that we're working on. Um, so if we think about it in that way, it can help ease some of the fears about, oh, if I'm not doing an evidence-based practice, then I'm doing something that's less worthy or less valuable or less fundable. Um, and we like to remind everybody, <laughs> remind ourselves that every evidence-based practice that, that fits the definition that you see on, this, on the screen at some point started off as a good idea, but because of a commitment to then continuously gather data and learn from it and improve and study it some more, good ideas can move along that continuum uh, and eventually make it uh, maybe, maybe designated as an evidence-based practice. Okay, so at this point, just based on that little bit of definition and description, we wanted to launch a poll just to see After hearing those definitions and thinking about a particular program or practice that you work on or you're interested in, would you say that you are doing something that sounds like a good idea or an effective practice or an evidence-based practice? And you can actually select more than one answer. So if you're doing some of, <laughs> some of everything, you can choose more than one thing. So we'll give it just a few more seconds to uh, leave the poll open before I close it and share the results. So again, a good idea, something that you've been doing and maybe gathering just kind of descriptive data, meaning number of participants, uh, maybe completion rates, things like that, but not yet formally evaluated. Effective practice has been evaluated but different from an evidence-based practice with a kind of a really rigorous scientific uh, process evaluation. Okay, I'm gonna close the poll. It looks like the responses have slowed down and then I'll just quickly share the results. So you can see we have some of everything and actually quite a few, pretty evenly split of you are doing something that would be considered an effective practice or an evidence-based practice. And I think if we had done this 
poll or this um, this pork coffee chat, like even three years ago, we would have had wildly different results, probably many more good ideas and effective practices than and many fewer evidence-based practice. So that's really interesting to see. Okay, so at this point, I will turn it over back to Nicole. Okay, thanks. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so that we can go through the Promising Practices database a bit together. And if you're following along on your own, just feel free to do the same thing that I'm doing. So I'm gonna go over to that resources tab and click on Promising Practices. I happen to be starting from the core results menu, but you can start from anywhere in DataShare. And you should get something that looks like this. So the Promising Practices database is a feature of the DataShare platform. And it's the DataShare platform is maintained by the Healthy Communities Institute, or HCI, conduit. And at least 150 other counties or areas are are part of this. Um, there may be more by now. And we're just, we're one of them. And so one of the advantages, one of the many advantages of data share being maintained by this, this vendor, HCI, is that they make sure that all of the indicator data are up to date at the same time. So if you've ever written a grant where you're uh, a proposal where you're hunting around for the latest survey data on the topic that you're interested in, Data share is one stop shopping for, for the most current versions of all kinds of data sets. So if you haven't yet, I encourage you to play around with some of these data and hot topic tabs. But for the promising practices purposes, what one of the things that HCI does is to maintain this database of practices. There's a lot of variation in how recent some of these are, how thoroughly they're described. And that's because a lot of them are submitted by people like us, local programs that are participants in the data share practices. So Nicole's asking me to zoom in a little, so I will do that. Let's see. Is that better? Okay. So the, um, the programs that are, the communities that are part of Healthy Communities Institute and have platforms just like this in their own areas, they, um, they may or may not be submitting things to add to this. And so we've been working really hard with our colleague, Cindy Wong, to add um, both local examples and things that we know are being used in the community that might be national or, or other um, programs. And so we learned recently from HCI that of the 22 programs that were recently added to this database, 20 of them came from us here in Santa Cruz. So we're going to try to keep that going. Um, and we'll show you a little later how you can uh, contribute your own program if you don't see it here. But you can see just from this initial list that the database currently includes examples from all over the country. They're not global yet. So, so if there's a program that you're interested in that's not in the United States, unfortunately, it's not going to be showing up in this database. But it is searchable by keywords. You can search by a, a primary target audience, the topic um, that may or may not overlap with the core conditions we just showed you. And there are lots of subtopics. So just it's easy to get overwhelmed when you start playing around in here, but just keep in mind that there are lots of ways to narrow your searches. And then you can also search by the um, what they're calling a ranking. And that's, as Nicole mentioned, a word that we really stay away from because we don't think that any of these are particularly better or worse than any other. It just has to do with where you are in your process of evaluating a particular program or intervention. And after all, all the things that are currently evidence-based practices did at some point start out as somebody's good idea. So it's totally appropriate to have a good idea that you're thinking about evaluating or trying to understand better um, that hasn't yet reached the evaluation threshold of being an effective practice or an evidence-based practice. It's just about the clarity of knowing where your program is. 
So you'll also see this local section under featured. It's not lit up yet, but this is where uh, Santa Cruz County programs, practices, and policies could be added, even if they don't meet the HCI definitions of good ideas, effective practices, or evidence-based practices. So let me show you a search, and then we'll practice doing a search on our own. So let's say that I wanted to search on programs for homeless women. So I'll do homeless. And then I'll see if there's, I'm going to filter by this target audience for women. And then let's see what happens. So a bunch of things come up. Now let's say that I wanted to know about specific policies or programs or laws. So I click that. So each of these, by the way, has subtopics, lots of them. So you can just see how much you can filter here. And that might narrow things a bit, but it might narrow them too much. So now I have nothing showing up here. So I may have over filtered. So I'm gonna remove the women's screen, just see if there are things about homelessness and practices. And now I, now I do get a couple of things. And I see that there's a medical legal partnership. It's from Kansas, from Kansas City. Might be the Missouri side, we'll see. And so when I look in here, I can see some details that might tell me that it's still interesting to me. So it's got some, some features that I might want to explore further. There's a, a way that I can contact the person in charge of this in that place if I decide to do that with an email. Now, some of these might be really out of date. They might be a decade or more old, but it's a place to start. And I can learn more about that organization or maybe see who's in charge of it now. And then I can see some related promising practices here. And one of them has to do with domestic violence, which I happen to know for the clients I'm working with, let's say in the, in the program for women who are experiencing homelessness, that domestic violence is a major driver of their status um, of being unhoused from leaving an abusive partner. So that might give me some other clues for other ways to search for some other uh, programs and practices. So let's try some of these with you. We'll go back to the main part of the database. If you're following along on your own computer screen, um, let's see what you come up with. Let's try, let's say you're interested in programs for seniors, older adults. I'll leave it up to you how you want to search for that, and I'll give you a few minutes. So let's see what we come up with. Go ahead and type in a keyword search. You could do something as simple as seniors or get more specific. Maybe you only want evidence-based practices or only want good ideas to try yourself. Maybe you just want to look at older adults and health, for example. You decide. And then let's hear what you come up with. So we'll give you a few minutes. Any questions so far while we're going through? Is anybody having trouble? accessing the pages or the information we're sharing. Let us know in the chat or feel free to raise your hand using the reactions button. Nicole, I see Miguel's hand is raised. Yes, I just see that. Miguel, go ahead. What's your question or comment? Do you want to unmute yourself? And... Hi, good morning. I, 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 I tried to type, but uh, doesn't let me. So I don't know what to, to do. Are you, um, maybe you're typing on the, the screen that we have shown. No. I'll stop my share just momentarily. So Miguel, do you have the promising practices or data share database open on another window, perhaps on your? No, I don't. Okay. So I need so, to do that. 
Yeah, it's just that, um, I'm sorry, that's confusing sometimes because you see it in front of you, yeah, okay. it, but you're really seeing my screen, um, okay. not your screen. So thanks for, for asking that because others may be experiencing the exact same thing. So if you okay. are, if you have the ability to, um, to open uh, data share on another window, if you're on a laptop or a computer, that's the way that you can do your own search instead of trying to tap on what, what you see from our, um, our shared screen here. And so we'll put the, um, Nicole just put the link again in the chat. So try that, Miguel, see if you can click on that link that's okay. in the chat right now and see if that opens up the Promising Practices page for you. And then you can try a search. Let us know how it's going. Nicole, you want to see if anybody has found something, if they want to share their screen to yeah, just, show us what's going on. Anybody on the Spanish channel, do you have a, something you want to share? Right, Gisela, would you like to share your screen? Go ahead. Excuse me. I put in the suggestions that Nicole has made about seniors and health, and that's what I got. Uh, and this one uh, called my attention. So that's what I'm going to read more about, about um, a question of balance for seniors. Gracias, Isela. So did anyone else come up with an intriguing program this way or share different filters or have, have a, another path. There's so many really wonderful rabbit holes to go down this way. So it's just a question of, of finding the one that, that uh, rewards your patients because there might be a, a different kind of fit or the best part is when you find something that you weren't necessarily looking for and is just wonderfully appropriate to what you're trying to do. So those yeah. things can happen. Uh, Nicole, I got a, a bunch of uh, programs. Great. Tai Chi. Wanna... Uh, tai Chi, yes, for balance. Yeah. Wisdom Miguel... for all the women, fit and strong, amount of balance, mm -hmm. impact, willing walks. Great. Yeah, thank you. Got You're it. welcome. So you can see how you could try that with lots of different topics. So we see some things in the chat, children and homelessness. So Ramona put a link in the chat per program. So Nicole, I have a question. Yeah, Allison, go ahead. Okay. So I put in parent leadership. And uh -huh. so I'm now I'm I, do should I share my screen? Yeah. Yeah, should, please. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I put in parent leadership and so I now I, I see these and I, I I actually work with parent voices and I'm curious about what I'm seeing here. Yeah. So I click on parent voices and you know, so there's a lot of good information here about their work and their accomplishments. I guess my question is, um, like, how do I know how this is classified in terms of promising practice, like evidence-based, like, where does it stand on that spectrum? And also, like, where did this information come from? Like, how did it get in here? Was it based on one of their evaluations that they had had, like their evaluator put it in? There are many routes to get something on here, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. The HCI conduit team does some, or did at one point, do some um, harvesting of national clearinghouses and things that collect evidence-based practice. And then people like us nominate things to be on here. And so what we're hoping to uh, to stimulate is a lot of uh, a lot of submissions and interest in this, and and we hope that HCI will do this with other communities as well because it is a little bit variable, um, dependent on who has submitted things, or it, it looks like they did a more rigorous sweep perhaps some time ago, um, and so you'll see a lot of variation in how old or how detailed these are. And you'll also see when we talk about how you can submit programs um, that there are 
the, the choice of keywords and search terms is sometimes up to the person submitting them. They do check them, we know, because we just submitted a batch um, ourselves that we didn't see on here, and they asked us for some more information. So they do have uh, some templates and checklists that we'll talk about in just a moment. But um, Allison, you asked about how you know whether it's a good idea or evidence-based practice. Right under the title of Parent Voices, you can see the icon with the information button that says they've classified this as a good idea. So they should all have the classification right under the title. That's helpful. Nikki, Thank you. You're welcome. Nikki? We, we have a question in the chat from Jessica. Great. And, okay. she, and she's asking, what does HCI stand for? Thanks. I'm trying to avoid acronyms, but um, I slipped on that one. It's the Healthy Communities Institute, HCI, Healthy Communities Institute. They are the people behind this platform and many others. So there are 150 communities that are trying to be healthier that are part of the, um, that have their own versions of data share. They're not called data share necessarily, and they may look a little different, but HCI is the, the company, Healthy Communities Institute, or Conduent is another uh, part of that name. And they're the ones who do all of the work behind this or under the hood or however you want to think about it. They collect all the data that you see on data share. They look at um, primary and secondary data sources. They maintain things like this database. And this is why we're so fortunate to have um, our community partners supporting um, buying a license for this for all of us, because we don't have to do that updating ourselves. We don't have to maintain it, but we benefit from the most current data on this platform. And we, so Nicole Young and I noticed that the Promising Practices database had a lot of potential that was perhaps untapped because it wasn't as robust as we think it could be. And so we're trying to add um, examples to it and we encourage you to do the same, but we'll talk a little bit about how, to, how we can do that together. So yes, thanks for the question. And, it, it, and again, da data share has so much more than this. We're, we happen to be focusing on this today and it happens to be the home for a lot of things about core, the core tools, the core conditions and links to indicators, but it has a ton of really interesting, really useful, really accessible data. We really encourage you if you haven't to just spend some time with it and find your way around. And there's some great tutorials, video tutorials um, and ways to help you become more familiar with it. It will reward a couple hours spent um, finding your way around. Other questions? Um, let's let's see. We have a few minutes. Let's try another search of your own. I won't suggest what you look for. You may have already done this yourself. So, what's what's a topic that you're interested in? See how far you get, and um, and be persistent. The first try doesn't always work, but that's okay. You'll find your way. Let, let us know what you searched for and what you found. And while you're doing that, I just really want to reiterate that we really hope this will streamline the ways that you look for data related to your programs for whatever purpose, maybe it's for your own planning, maybe it's for um, launching something new or strengthening something you already have, tweaking something. Um, there are just so many ways to use this information. Maybe you're moving away from program work to do more policy work or, or vice versa. So there are just so many ways to incorporate the information on here into what you're doing and to help others by submitting what you're doing to this database. So anybody want to share what you what you search for and what you found, or even if you hit an obstacle or, or uh, hit a wall in your search, let us know. Maybe we can all figure it out. Gisela, you have your hand up. You're just, just saying hi. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, see. 
Um, pues yo puse well, mi... I put in about racial minorities and good idea. And the, the first page didn't give me any interesting results. So I went to the second page. Let me find it. This one called my attention. This one says it's a program to develop and produce uh, programs that for health. So I want to learn something more about that. Great, thank you. Gracias. Anybody else? Hi, Nicole. This is Satu uh, from Charities Health. I certainly can share my screen. Um, yeah, great. I'm always interested in school health. So I. Did you say in school health? Mm hmm. And, uh, you know, you can go so many directions with that, but how to make the link between clinics and students and the schools. And um, I was, I did, I like this teen advocates for healthy KCK where the mission is to empower undeserved at risk adolescent girls to, you know, really reach out and take care of themselves. But it, 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 like you said, you could get lost in your rabbit holes. I didn't know how to narrow down to 300. <laughs> I was at 2000 and got down to 317, but I have to really think about, well, where do I want to go? But, you know, do we use community health workers to support our um, elementary schools or, you know, uh, community leaders like with Allison's program? So yeah, there's just, it's a fascinating, this is such a great data share point. So thank you for having this. And let me try and unshare my screen. Now that I'm in the screen, I, <laughs> I'm getting out. See. Yeah, just just click stop share. But thanks, Satu. That's so true that you can start with thousands, get down to hundreds or dozens, and then go back out. Um, and it just really is a function of how much time and persistence you may have available at that moment. But um, there are just so many ways that you know. Every time we dive in here, it's sort of like woo look over here, Ooh, look over there. And there are just um, so many, many options. And the idea that there, are, um, that there are programs out there that have something to offer us, either as a, um, a solution to a gap that we've, that we've noticed or as a way to layer on another dimension of something we're already doing or to try something new and, and reach out to another population that we're serving in a different way. They're just all available to us through this, this one spot. Um, so we just encourage you to explore. And so just, um, just so that we have time to show you how, to, how we're doing that and how to do that, I'll turn it back over to Nicole. Great, and I'm gonna share my screen again. Um, so as Nicole mentioned, um, one of the things we really that was really appealing to us about this database is not only that it has so many things housed in one place, but it, it's very customizable to our local community. Um, any of you that were around and, and um, prepared a proposal for the initial round of core funding, well, it's been about five years ago now, you'll remember that um, in order as part of preparing your grant proposal, you had to go and, and figure out, okay, am I doing an evidence-based or promising practices and how do I know? Like basically at that time, really the only things that existed were several different kind of online, they were called clearing houses, they still exist, um, that are similar to this promising practices database, except that you had to kind of know where to go and, and find those clearing houses and how to search each one of them to see if anything you were doing uh, fit one of those criteria. So this now has, we're trying to have as much as possible housed in this one database. Um, so even part of what we're doing is looking at other clearing houses, other programs and practices that exist in those that aren't yet in this promising practices database. And we're preparing, we're gathering and preparing the information to submit to uh, HCI. Uh, they have their own research term, research team that will then review all that information, decide which category it fits within evidence-based, effective, or good idea, and then they'll add it to the database. And so that's the process. We, we just basically went through that with 
one batch that's those 20 programs that Nicole mentioned that just got added. And so what we've, we're, we're basically doing, and really anyone can do this, but we're gonna offer to help with that if anybody is interested. Uh, if you wanted to do it on your own, you could go to the Promising Practices database, click Submit a Promising Practice, and then you see this form appear online. So you would have to have all this information ready to fill in and, and populate in this online form. So you can do that if it's a single program or a practice or, or a policy, you can see a lot of things are required. Um, and then you can kind of suggest, you know, the primary target audience or keywords. And so that's what Nicole was saying that, you know, depending on <laughs> what keywords someone thinks are relevant. So that could really alter or change what sh shows up in a search result, in the search results. So anybody can do this. Uh, probably easiest if you're doing, you know, a particular program or a particular policy or practice. Um, HCI, the team that we've been working with has agreed to accepts kind of like batch submissions from us. So we're working with our colleague, Cindy Wong, who's not on this call today, but is doing a lot of this behind the scenes kind of background sleuthing um, to gather information, to basically be ready to submit um, all the information that's in that, that you just saw in that form, but in a spreadsheet. So we can submit, you can see here was our first um, kind of batch that were all related to employment and work development programs. Um, we did another smaller batch on programs for older adults. We're working on um, preparing our next set of batches are about local programs that agencies in Santa Cruz County has said, oh, I'm um, implementing this evidence-based practice or this program. Um, we're trying to gather all the information about that so we can submit like a whole bunch of those uh, programs to HCI at once. And then their research team still goes through their steps that they need to, to vet all that information and make sure it's accurate and that it's complete. Um, and it takes them a little while to do that. We submitted our first batches back in November or December and they just got added um, to the database. So it, there's a little bit of a, you know, delay there, but it means that they are doing their work carefully. Um, and so we're just gonna keep sending them things. <laughs> we're gonna keep adding to that database um, and try to get as much in there as possible, especially before the next uh, request for proposals for CORE comes out because that will be a tool that people will be encouraged to use and, and refer to as if they decide to submit a grant application for CORE. Um, and so we wanted to just kind of make it an open invitation to all of you and anybody that's watching this recording later um, to let us know if there's a particular program or practice that you implement that you don't see on data share on promising practices yet. Um, if, if there's something that comes to mind right away, go ahead and type it in the chat because we'll, we'll add that to our list. And what we'll have to do is, um, you know, we can do a little bit of that background information gathering Cindy can do that background information gathering for us, um, but there's probably a lot of communication and back and forth um, that we might need to do with you if, if you're the one that has that information um, so that we can help populate that spreadsheet to submit to HCI. Okay, and maybe I'll just ask, is, is it, um, did anyone try to search for a particular program or practice that you currently implement and you didn't find it in the database? We have positive discipline, anything else? Adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse. Is that, um, Angelina, is that, a, is that the name of a particular program or curriculum that, that you use or is it kind of a topic? Um, and feel free, Angelina, if you want to say more about it in the, it's a yeah, topic in the community we serve. Yeah. And so that might be one, if it's a topic, like a general topic, or it's a general community that you serve, um, the way you might end up using promising practices is to search by target audience 
or search by issue to see what kinds of programs show up um, that are um, designed for or meant for that particular population. If there's a specific, uh, so that's one of the things we learned from this first round of submissions to HCI, that if we were submitting things that were too general, like there were some things that we found in other clearing houses that were like general policies, like um, paid family leave or <laughs> living wage, which, you know, um, they're, they actually show up as evidence-based um, policies in other clearing houses. And we thought, oh, wouldn't those be great to include in the Promising Practices database? Um, but unless we were able to gather enough information to really fill out that spreadsheet for HCI, it, it just, um, some of them are too general to be added to the, the database. So that's something that if you um, either submit a program on your own or want us to help with that, that's something we'll have to be prepared to do is, is gather as much of that information as possible. Nicole, can I ask, would we reach out to either you or Nicole? <laughs> Nicole yep. Y, Nicole L. Yes. Because I realize, I'm not sure how, I, I will try searching for our program. I was actually thinking of two programs at one time, uh, but now I'm thinking about the school one more. But I realize one of the Stanford um, medical providers who's done this for 30 years said he's never seen anything like this and he really wants this program to expand. So maybe it's not in there and maybe this is something brand new. So I hadn't really thought of those words till we had this meeting. So thank you for having this meeting and having us think about little ideas may one day turn into evidence. Yes, you're welcome. And uh, I just put our emails in the chat. We'll also send out the follow-up email with the link to this recording, but and that will include our contact information as well. Um, there is a kind of a, a newish group of organizations that are now kind of in charge of data share so that you might also see other announcements about more training, specific trainings on data share and how to use the different features um, coming from the United Way or Pajar Valley Community Health Trust or from people at the county. So if you see that, just know that like that's the group now that is in charge of like maintaining data share. Um, Nicole Lezen and I, again, really want to see uh, data share be successful and, and especially because it's the home for these core tools that we're that we've been developing and working on. So also feel free, especially if there's a particular program or practice that you'd like to see added to the database that is part of the work we're doing for core. Are there any other questions or comments about the Promising Practices database? I see Ramona's asking, who can we contact about getting data points added to data share? That's a, that's a good question. And so at this point, probably the best like central point of contact is the new person who is the coordinator for that group of agencies I just mentioned. Her name is Eva Holtz-Russmore. And uh, Nicole, do you happen to have her email handy? We'll put it in the chat and we'll also include that in the follow-up email. There's an actual data committee for, for data share that, that handles those kinds of requests um, that actually Nicole and I both sit on as well, but Eva is, is a good central point of contact for that. And while we're um, finishing up here, I just, I noticed that Dorian Seamster joined us today and just want to give a little shout out to Dorian, who was um, really one of the original people that helped get this all started and bring it to life in Santa Cruz County. Um, Dorian uh, is a consultant who, again, helps lead, helped the Health Improvement Partnership, HIP, kind of organize this effort and um, kind of create those collaborative agreements about, you know, this, using this particular platform and, you know, what it should look like for our community. Um, and so Dorian, it's good to see you here. It's, it's great to be here. And I'm so excited about seeing, um, you know, deepening the way people can uh, use data share and the tools that are available and the information that's available. And I did have one 
one comment just now, which is that there is a contact us button on DataShare, and that's another way to get in touch um, when you want to add um, uh, or have a, a measure be considered for adding. So. Yes, thanks for that reminder, Dorian. Yeah, so, some measures they may want to include for everybody that, you know, that's uh, a client of theirs and others might be more locally um, of interest. So there are various ways and then there are various, um, so, some of those opportunities are easier than others. So they, they may or may not come with a cost attached. I think we are ready to wrap up here. Nicole, if you want to share the last slide again, if anybody else has questions, feel free to ask them or put them in the chat. Um, but we'll also ask you to, we're going to share the link to the satisfaction surveys for today. So Gisela, if you want to go ahead and put those in the, in the chat, that would be great. Um, or if you have a camera with the, um, and you can scan the QR codes on the, that you see on the screen. You can also get to the survey that way. But we would love your feedback about today's session. We do look at those and try to learn from them and, and continuously improve these sessions. So please share your feedback either through the English survey or the Spanish survey. And we are continuing to build out the schedule and the calendar of future core coffee chats and conversations and other trainings that we're going to offer through the Core Institute. We don't have anything to announce today, but keep an eye out for those in our follow-up emails. So with that, we will stay on for just a couple more minutes in case anybody does have lingering questions, but thank you so much everyone for being here today and participating and asking great questions. It makes it fun for us. And we will see you next time. Thanks everyone.